Uh, so we started kits uh, about five years ago, just with asking by just by asking ourselves the question, you know, why is why is this eye care category that eight out of ten adults need to get through the day um, still so complicated? What you know, why does it cost four hundred dollars still to buy a pair of, uh, of eyeglasses? Why does it take you know up to two weeks uh, to get them? And so, you know. W we said, let's set out um, to make eye care easy. And, and that, that's what we've been working on. So here's the, it, it, to make eye care easy, we knew that it wouldn't be by adding more stuff to the category, not, not more stores, not more, not, not more things, not more steps, but by taking away some of the waste. And that's really what we set out to do. And now here's the thing about this optical category. It, it's pretty big, it's about $80 billion in um, in, uh, in the U.S. is about $8 billion in, in Canada. Um, and so to really make an impact and disrupt some of these legacy uh, 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 competitors, you need size and you need scale. And so a 10, 20, even a $50 million company isn't going to make that much of a difference. We knew that to really disrupt this category, we'd need to be 100, you know, and really 200 million um, at least, uh, um, and be profitable. And so we said, as we started out in 2018, we said, okay, what's our, what's our approach to do it? Let's be really deliberate about it. And you know, for us, there was two secrets um, to, this in, to solving this industry and growing to 200 million and beyond uh, and staying profitable as we do. You know, secret number one is start with contact lenses, which is a smaller part of the category. Contact lenses is about 20 billion in the US out of a $80 billion category and it has a lower gross margin profile. Gross margin is about 30, 35, 40% for contact lenses and for glasses, it's like 50, 100, over 100% gross margin. So you know, why would you start with a smaller category that has a lower gross margin profile? Well, contact lenses are highly recurring. Customers are coming back every three to six months um, to buy, to, to refill their contact lens order. So it's very profitable um, over time. Uh, and these are also vision corrected customers. And so 100% of these vision corrected customers that are buying contact lenses also need to buy prescription glasses, even if it's just to give their eyes a break for a day. And so secret number one for us is start with a smaller category, build a profit core of vision corrected customers, and then use that profit core to launch into glasses. And when you do launch into glasses, secret number two is start with the manufacturing. Uh, because all of the profit in this category in, in eyeglasses, I mean all of the profit, is in, uh, is in the lenses and the manufacturing of those lenses. Um, the coatings, the, you know, the, the blue light, et cetera, et cetera. And so that, that's pretty counterintuitive as well because why would you put millions of dollars into a lens lab uh, when you haven't figured out how to sell any glasses? Well, if you do it the other way, in our view, you know, you're, and you figure out how to sell 100, and then 1,000, then 10,000 pairs of glasses, well, you're essentially building a, a marketing organization, or even worse, a retail organization. And then you gotta figure out um, how to build uh, a lens lab and, and an operations uh, infrastructure uh, in reverse. And it, it turns out that's just pretty hard to do. And so, so that's what we did. We said, there's two secrets to this industry. Start with a smaller piece, contact lenses. Build up that profit core, vision corrected customers use that profit to launch into glasses and start with the, with the lens lab, the, the manufacturing, so that you can control the, the cost and quality as you do. Um, and so before we sold our first pair of glasses, we put a couple million of our own capital into the first version of our lens lab. And so fast forward, I guess, about uh, nearly five years, you know, we've got about 120 million, just over 120 million run rate um, we're, we're, you know, we've been growing about 30% or higher over the last four quarters. Um, it's a highly reoccurring business. So about 60% of our revenue every year comes from repeat customers. Uh, we have uh, lots of active customers, almost, you know, going on a million active customers, um, and we're profitable. And so I'd like to say, well, okay, how did you grow from zero to 125, say profitable? Um, uh, in you know just under five years, I mean, you, I'd like to say, well, here's a couple growth hacks we've you know discovered, and 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 um, you know certainly you know we're we're happy with the way a couple of things have worked, but but really at the core of it is is the fact that we have the lowest cost infrastructure in the category. Um, we don't have any waste, um, 
at the exact time that the market, this $80 billion market in the US is moving online, um, away from all these brick and mortar stores. And, and, so, you know, and so who's moving online? It's really driven um, by the millennial customer. Uh, the millennial customer in the US is, is the largest demographic block. It's about 72 million customers uh, in the US. It's a, the biggest portion of disposable income as well. And it's about you know, seven and a half to eight million customers in, in Canada. And, and, and that, that's a customer that just has been buying online their entire life. Um, and they don't understand why they can't buy optical online too. And they've told us you know, that they don't really have any desire to you know, get in their car or Uber, go to a lens crafters, you know, pay $400 for a pair of glasses uh, from a limited selection on a wall, and then wait two weeks to get back in the car and drive and pick them up. And so, um, and so the, the move online has actually been pretty dramatic over the last couple of years. And that's been the, you know, one of the biggest drivers of our growth. So pre-pandemic contact lenses was about 18% online um, uh, revenue uh, online as a percentage of total. And fast forward a couple of years is about 35 to 38% this year, you know, well on the way to 50% and above. Um, eyeglasses used to be about seven or eight percent pre-pandemic. It's now about eighteen percent, you know, and growing, and it's actually increasing in growth every year after the pandemic. So the market's moving online. We happen to have the lowest cost infrastructure um, to support that. It, you know, and the team's pretty important. Um, Roger, Sabrina, and I started Kits um, just under five years ago, and Roger's got a lot of experience in the optical category. He started a, a company called Clearly. Here in Canada, it, it, it had other regions um, uh, as well, and it was a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ, and it got acquired in 2014 for about 450 million in cash. Um, and so, you know, w when, when we first started, Roger and I just said, there's, there's more work to be done in this category, and, you know, we don't really have any interest in stopping it at half a billion this time. And, and Sabrina joined us as well, and she's got a, a, a rich background in. Uh, in, uh, in finance, she was at, at Goldman in New York for about 15 years, and um, my background is more in operations and marketing, and, and I, I just kind of push the broom around a little bit. Um, and, and we have a, a great team, uh, a number of whom are, are with us here today. So, you know, from a growth standpoint, uh, growth been, has been um, uh, good over the last four quarters. You know, about f uh, we, we pre-announced our, our latest quarter um, uh, about a week ago, um, uh, which was Q3, and, and it was another 30% uh, plus uh, growth quarter. Uh, and so really the way we're thinking about it is, you know, it took us uh, just under four years to get from zero to 100 million in revenue. And, and you know, it's our view, uh, we haven't put any guidance in the market, but it's our view that the first 100 million is probably the hardest. And, and so it should probably take us less than four years to get to the next 100 million. And so, Again, no, no guidance in market, but certainly we have internal targets. And so we feel like two, two and a half years is the, is, is the right range for us to get from 100 million to, to 200 million. And, and you know, we're certainly you know, well on the way to that. We're about 125 so far um, in just under a year, growing at about 30%. And, and we know what the economics look like at 100 million. So what are they gonna look like at 200 million? Well, the, the great thing about having size and scale in this category is as you grow, you get more leverage on the model. And so, you know, we've seen, we are profitable, we're, we're, we're funding all this growth from our own cash flow, um, uh, and you know, we're gonna continue to, to increase profitability. So, so what, are the, what, what do we anticipate the economics to look like at 200 million? Well, we know what they look like at 100 million. We're about, you know, 33 to 35% gross margin. And, and slightly profitable, it's about 2% um, EBITDA um, as of the last couple quarters. Um, so call it, call it about flat, 100 million in revenue in four years, you know, 35%-ish gross margin and, and flat on EBITDA, funding that growth from our own cash flow. Well, as we add more glasses, as we're doing every quarter, gross margin goes up. As we grow the business in size and scale, gross margin goes up. And so, our view is that as glasses make up a, a greater percentage of the business, that, you know, that we'll have about a 40, 45% gross margin business when we're at 200 million. Now, you know, for us to grow, we, we need to hold, and for us to grow profitably, we need to continue to hold marketing at around 12 to 14% of, of revenue. 
we'll, we'll continue to see more leverage on fulfillment. We, you know, we see that that could come as low as uh, 11%, and GNA will leverage to around 5 or 6%. So, so ultimately, what do we want to have? We want to have a $200 million business in a few years um, that's growing at 30% a year and it's yielding about a 10 to 15% EBITDA. And, and it feels like we're well on the way to do that. Now, what's, what's, gonna, what's gonna help make um, the biggest question that we always get, maybe I'll just get in front of it before we jump into any questions is, you know, how do we hold marketing at 12 to 14%? You know, this is, this is you know, it was, was in the US last week and meeting with some folks and, and this was, you know, the number one question. Um, typically, you kind of hit a, a, an amount and then you just need to spend more in marketing. It goes 15, 20% of revenue and beyond, um, especially as you're growing in, in glasses. So how are you going to do it? Well, our view is, you know, we could, it, it costs, it, it tends to cost about 80 to to $100 to acquire a customer from Facebook or Instagram on glasses. And so that's one approach for sure. We can definitely acquire that customer, and, but then we just need to charge more money um, uh, to protect that gross margin to the customer. So instead, we take the approach that, you know, we've got the lowest cost infrastructure um, in the industry. I, I don't think anyone can make a pair of prescription glasses cheaper and deliver it faster at the quality we offer anywhere in North America. So we take this low cost infrastructure, this lowest cost of manufacturing, and we just use that as a marketing tactic. And we run promotions like, get your first pair free. And so, um, you know, it costs us, you know, this pair of kids' glasses I'm wearing, you know, the frames cost about $10 to make. Um, the raw material lens pucks are about 3 to $5. You know, there's some labor and machine consumables, about 3 to $5. And now I've got to ship it to you. Um, and that's about eight, eight, 8 to, it can be as high as $10 all in. And so that's a range of $25 to $35 delivered cost of goods sold for a pair of prescription glasses. And so we take that cost of goods sold and we say, well, let's just give that to the customer instead of giving $100 to Facebook. And so, you know, we have, you know, influencers and just organic reach where, you know, we'll just roll out, hey, if you've never made a purchase on kids.com in the U.S. or kids.ca in Canada, you know, we'll give you your first pair of prescription glasses for free. We'll make the first move. And so, of course, nobody believes it. And, you know, there's all these comments on social, like, whatever, nothing's free in life. Um, uh, and, you know, on our chat with our customer service team, what's the catch? I don't get it. You know, just tell me now. And we're like, well, there's no catch. You got to pay for the shipping. That's about eight bucks. But that's really it. And so the customer says, whatever, uh, you know, this is never going to work. But they go through, they pick a pair of glasses, put in their prescription, place the order. Um, and they kind of forget about it because, you know, maybe a week, a month, something will show up. Let's see. Um, and then, you know, if we, if we deliver, as, as it, and we're not doing this on 100% of orders, but on most orders we are doing it, it'll take us 20 to 30 minutes to make a pair of prescription glasses. We've got this lens lab. Um, right here in Vancouver, um, and we make about 4,000 pairs a day. So we make them in 25, 30 minutes, get them in the carrier network quickly, um, and start shipping them east um, uh, overnight. And, it, and so the next day, this customer that's ordered first pair free opens their door, and there's a kid's box on, on the front, on the front uh, uh, stoop. And, and they're looking at it going, no way, no way. Um, and they open it up, and they put on the glasses, and the glasses look great, the quality's good. Um, the prescription's perfect, the lenses are great, um, and, and the fit works. And so, and these customers are calling us going, you know, how, how, how'd you do it? What's the catch? Glasses take two weeks to get, um, and they cost me three, four hundred dollars. You just gave them to me for free. And so, you know, we say to them, our catch is just tell everyone you know. And, and so that, that's, you know, helped um, to scale our glasses business. Um, to the point where we're, we're now, uh, you know, one of the larger glasses uh, retailers in North America. Um, and we're doing most of it through word of mouth. And, you know, we need to, we need to do more, uh, more promotions like that. But, you know, but that's essentially how we're going to get and keep marketing in the 12 to 14 percent of, uh, of revenue range. So, you know, what I'm hoping, and, and I guess maybe the last thing to mention on the lab, we use the use of proceeds from the IPO in 2021 um, to build out the lab. It is built to scale, so we don't need more capital um, to get and, and grow this business to 200. We think the lab and fulfillment center uh, will sustain us at the current levels until we're about 240, 250 million in revenue. And so, you know, ultimately what I'd like, if you're new to the story, 
You probably, uh, you, you haven't heard this, if you've heard this story before, you probably heard a similar story a couple years ago. Our story really hasn't changed. We're building the lowest cost infrastructure in the category. Um, and, you know, hopefully in, you know, in the next one to two years, you know, if you're hearing the story again, you know, it'll be me um, saying the same thing, but saying we're now a $200 million company. We're at 40, 45% gross margin, 10, 15% EBITDA. We're growing at 30% a year. Uh, as this customer base continues to move online, we're not running out of share of customers, these millennial customers that are moving online, and we're funding that growth from our own cash flow. So, um, so, um, so that's Kits, and, and why don't I stop there, and, and thanks everyone.